And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two. So again, we're just continuing with all the update stuff. So the aircon lines, power steering line, uh, heater tap, all that sort of stuff. So whatever you haven't seen in the first episode, will probably be in this episode, and then we'll just continue on as per usual. So make sure you subscribe, keep up to date, check out the Patreon, check out the uh, Instagram, the Facebook, all that sort of fun stuff, and help the channel out if you can. So let's jump into this episode, part two. Let's get on with it. I'm pumped. So, hoses are off, O-rings are in a bag, so tomorrow morning I can take them in, as well as the power steering pump, and get them all matched up, I'll get all new O-rings, uh, if they have them, and yeah, hopefully they can fix these lines, and make them all one piece. Alright, so I just thought I'd chuck this in there, um, or in this episode, this is the bracket that holds a massive uh, wiring connector and loom under the dash. Uh, because of our pedal assembly now, this is no longer able to be fitted, so I'm going to re, uh, relocate it. Problem is, I can't relocate it how I want to, so I'm going to have to make my own bracket up. So, what I'm going to do is, this is just a piece of steel off an old gas tank. And what I'm going to do is just have the bracket similar to this. It's not going to clip in, I'll just cable tie it to the piece of steel. But I'm going to bend it where that meets there. Um, and just have it the length of this and maybe over, I doubt I'll even go over the top of it It's purely just going to be cable tied to this piece of steel just to hold the wiring out of the way So I'm just going to put one bend in it and then cut it off and she'll be sweet Okay, so we're looking under the dash here and you can see the wiring there that's tucked up with the metal bracket that I just made as well as the cable tie around it. Now, one thing I have just realized is that that is directly in the way of the bonnet release cable. Hopefully I'll be able to work around it so I don't have to move it again, but if I do have to move it again, well, I'll deal with that at a later date. But you can see the pedal brackets in there. Now, I'm unsure with engineering whether I'm gonna have to put a automatic brake pedal in it because obviously they're quite a bit wider and they probably sit more central um, because this is a manual brake pedal so if I have to do that I have to do that but for now near enough good enough I'll check with the engineer and make sure but yeah other than that the pedal bracket is done next up is the wiring all right so I just fitted the thermo fans to the uh, radiator here and let me tell you poking a screwdriver through radiator fins is extremely unnerving uh, it took everything in my willpower not to do it um, or to do it because it is a very uh, weird sensation that you're pretty much destroying something but anyways as you can see the thermo fans are on so now I can check the radiator back in the car then I can worry about trying to wire it up and then yeah we'll uh, see how we go for anybody interested this is a Whirly's radiator that came uh, from eBay However, the problem is you have to cut a massive section out of the bottom just to make the bloody thing fit. I don't know how they're not aware of it. And one of the little doohickeys that holds the fans on, I munted a bit, so I had to take the spring off that one. But that's alright, it'll live. So yeah, let's chuck this back in the car. Okay, so the radiator's mounted, you can see the fans in there. And now I have a hell of a lot of clearance. Before you could barely fit a screwdriver through there. It was like about six mil, but that is a lot more clearance. Obviously it's not as ideal as running a full thermo setup with a shroud, but it'll get me through for now until I can figure out exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, given that these fans are much slimmer, what I will do is I'll probably make up a custom shroud and then mount these fans to the shroud just so it's sort of similar to factory. Anyways, that's a future job for now. The radiator's done. What 
what an absolute mission. You can probably see I'm absolutely sweating my whole off, but it is uh, probably about 30 degrees still. Anyways, um, yeah, in, the hoses are in. So, as you can see, that's the TX valve. I remembered what it was, my old man reminded me. Um, so yeah, you got your TX valve, and then the this is one of the custom lines, uh, which runs through into the compressor here. So the aircon lines are done. That's one more thing ticked off the list. And as you can see, it's not like a real bodgy job. The guys actually did a really good job. That was a place local to me called Hose Mart in Wangara. So yeah, it was pretty reasonably priced too. A lot of people I know scrap the aircon in conversions or um, when they're playing cars, but it's honestly not hard to get lines made up. Uh, that, so the lines and a little bit of trickery with the ECU and a solution from Canberra and the aircon will work in this thing. So I'm gonna retain aircon. I wanna be able to cruise around on hot days. So I don't wanna be sweating on like I am now uh, during the day while I'm driving around. Anyways, uh, so yeah, aircon's done. You saw the thermo fans are done. Um, I can't remember what else we're gonna do on this episode, but I'm sure if there's something else, it'll be added right now. Another thing, I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but um, yeah, I used one of my new toys. This is the bonnet release latch which they're usually absolutely covered in old grease and grime. As you can see, it's nice and fresh and clean. I uh, chucked it in the ultrasonic cleaner over here, uh, got it up to about 70 degrees and used the ultrasonic cleaning function and oh man, all the grease just dripped off. So she is sparkly clean, ready for some new grease, ready to go back on the car. Okay, so another cool thing about the um, guys at Hose Mart in Wangara is they hooked me up with this little fitting here. This is a little fitting for the power steering pump to turn the power steering pump fitting into a dash six. So what I'm gonna do is find the power steering pump, don't know where I put it. I'm gonna chuck that up into the power steering pump and then I'll be able to figure out where my line needs to run. I'm gonna take the hard line for the power steering out, the um, high pressure line, I'm gonna take that out uh, tell them how much longer I need it and what fitting to put on the end to make it in or what angle or straight or whatever dash six fitting I need they're gonna modify that hose to suit and then I'll have the power steering line done as well so yeah um, the right people can make the hose job a lot easier than many people make it out to be so yeah Alright, so I found my power steering pump, I've chucked the adapter in, so now we're going to chuck it in the car. Okay, so I just used my Fandangle custom made spanner and cracked it off. So, with any luck, we should be able to undo this. All right, okay, there's one power steering hose, one O-ring, one bracket that I just mangled the absolute shit out of. All right, so it's another day, we're back in the shed. Woo, sneak peek. Anyways, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna quickly drop the car and have a look at what's going on. All right, so I just broke my GoPro mount yet again because these things are cheap Chinese pieces of crap. Anyways, um, yeah, it's been about a week and I just thought I'd update and finish off this episode. So the power steering line is done, which I'll show you right now. All right, so as you can see here, we've got the power steering line adapted. There is not a whole lot of room about there, but hopefully enough just to get the hose and hose clamp on. Um, they shouldn't move independent of each other, so I should be 100% fine as long as I can get the hose between it. So yeah, but we'll figure it out anyways, a bit later on. But the hose is done, it's all, it's not touching anything, it's nice and crimped. Apparently the restrictor is still in there as well to stop the like force feedback of the steering wheel and all that sort of stuff. So that's all well and good and done. All right, so that's one more big job off the list. The next episode has already been filmed, I've just got to edit it. It is the drive shaft, because that's all done and dusted. We've made the bracket, 
And then obviously coming up in the future, the list is getting smaller. It's, yeah, stuff's happening. But all the drive shaft's done, and yeah, we've got intercooler piping to go, we've got exhaust to go, we've got wiring to go, and the trans cooler, and then this thing will be running. So it's not far off, and I'm really hoping it's gonna be done within a month. I've also got some holidays coming up, which should help out a lot. So that should give me a bit more time to play. But yeah, hoses are all done. Uh, so creature comforts, the thermo fans, the radiator, you've seen all that now. Uh, I do apologize for the audio being janky. The GoPro was having some serious issues, but I've updated it now and it seems to have fixed it. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you are enjoying the series, please let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, the video, the views have dropped off a lot and I don't know whether it's because the content's boring or whether it's because it still hasn't started and people are losing interest and all that sort of fun stuff. But yeah, please let me know in the comments. If I can make this any better or make it more enjoyable, let me know, apart from obviously sending it because it will get sent eventually. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Peace out, guys. We'll see you in the next episode.